think it's important times. Congratulations also to Turkey on uh, seeing that the peak on the COVID incidences is going down. I think these are very important signals. And the whole break that we are seeing, not only in Turkey, but all over Europe and all over the whole world, that people have to break. People have to stay home and really engage with, with each other in a different collaborative way. Supporting and creating again these local communities, I think is a big opportunity for a window of change that they really need to make change happen for the way forward. Because we have been waiting for such a change for a long time. And recently in a conversation with a businessman, um, this uh, CEO said to me, listen, if the current crisis is going to give us an opportunity to change 20%, 20% of what we need to change, then this is really big. If we're able to change because of this big pause that we are in now to steer 20% into a new direction, then we truly can make a difference. Because remember, when we are talking about systems change and we, when we are talking about how to create a new world, there's often talk about the tipping point. So how can we drive the change in a system to a certain percentage point? There are often the tipping point is 20%. And if we reach this, a whole system can change. So I think it's really a unique opportunity right now that we can make that happen. That's why I wanted to say right at the beginning, the time is now. The challenges don't change. We see a lot of alleviation and betterment in the greenhouse gas emissions because, for example, of less driving and less flying. But the structural changes that need to happen, the structural problems we are facing, they haven't changed. We're living in a time of an economic difficulties and crisis of social inequalities that need uh, big responses. And obviously in times when we need to uh, respond to the environmental pressures that we are seeing. So environmentally, socially, and from a business side, we have to come up with new holistic answers. And I truly <coughs> think that the circular economy can give very clear examples. I want to say also why, and I have recently uh, listened to a talk from a famous professor from the US, uh, Jeffrey Sachs, who is also advisor to the United Nations. And he, in a very interesting way, compared the Corona and uh, COVID crisis with the crisis we are seeing on the environment and the climate. And uh, one thing, I wanna share five points with you. One, we have been warned. We knew these crises were happening. We know it from the climate change side since decades and also on the COVID on the Corona side, we have been knowing for years now that, that experts have been warning us. Two, it is about exponential growth. The infections have grown uh, exponentially over a couple of days and weeks. And that's the same with how climate change has progressed, unfortunately. Three, people knew. Scientists have told us, experts have been warning. And we have been facing this kind of looming crisis with arrogance, we have been looking away and have been complacent. I think looking at this from a positive side, that's a call for leadership from all of you here on the screens and wherever you are today. Take leadership in the organizations, in the businesses, or in the governments and cities where you are sitting now. Number four, there are solutions. And I'm going to talk about a little bit of this today in my conversation with you, because truly for me, it's a conversation. I have been working on this for a couple of years, but I truly feel like a student of systems change. And so I invite you all to be students, submit your questions, and hopefully we can answer many of those uh, after the conversation. And I'm also happy to take them virtually via email, for example. And five, the most important, and this is what SKD is doing today with its partners, we need to take leadership. The Circle Economy platform in Turkey, and I was lucky to be present in Turkey at the end of last year, where we worked with the consulates, where we worked with SKD and its partners together on framing a vision and where the journey in Turkey can go and what the benefits for Turkey are for a circular economy in its businesses, in its cities, but also for the people, because that's important. And for this, we need truly leadership. I just talked with you before about that. For me, the two crises are very interlinked. I invite you also to 
a look at uh, my LinkedIn profile where we had just an hour ago finished a big global conversation with people from Taiwan, people from China, people from Canada and Europe everywhere people listened in and we were talking about how this crisis can now be used for a build back better approach and how circular economy can fit into this and online you will find a lot of information on this we have also recorded this talk i truly believe when we all see that we need to rebuild the economy that we need to change the economy but respect that we're not talking about sectors that are isolated or cities that are isolated but when we truly see everything as a system like you see here on the slide, a city is a system, like a forest is a system, or like nature are systems, then we have a chance to give things and look at things with a fresh look. With this fresh look, we're going to see new avenues for change. And this is how uh, two slides I want to share with you that I always keep repeating. That's an old linear system where we go with a simple mindset from extracting something from the earth producing a product, not thinking what is going to happen at the end of its life cycle and at the end burning or throwing away this valuable resource. If we can think about this, and we often do this in our gardens, in our communities, in our daily interaction, it's not only about one way street, about an action in one way, but it's a giving and taking. It's circles, it's energetic exchange. Then we can truly think on what the circular economy can bring and we can think about how we can maintain things better, how we can reuse materials and products, how we can refurbish what we already have and upgrade things so that they are put to higher use, or how we can use the simplest route of a circular economy, how we can use recycling to at least make sure things are not destroyed at the end of its life cycle. If we respect this very simple um, approaches, then we can truly define with systems thinking and build a basis for a new approach to sectors, a new approach to supply chains and building prosperity for all, for the people who we want to do this for. Um, I was the last three years until February this year, the CEO of an organization in Amsterdam uh, called Circle Economy. Um, now I'm also advising the global climate change negotiation and it's uh, business side, the importance of bringing businesses into this track. Uh, and in my old functions, we, um, we published a report called the Circularity Gap Report, where we said globally, how does the situation look like? And the latest figures shows that the world overall, the world economy is only 8.6% circular. That means it's 90 and more than 90% non-circular. It's a situation that is not acceptable and has to change. And unfortunately, the trend has been going into the wrong direction. So circular, circularity has been decreasing. I hope uh, because we have been kicking off this kind of uh, work with other uh, countries such as Norway, Canada, or Netherlands and Austria, that also Turkey will have the chance to work on a circularity gap report because it gives a chance to show people one, a clear figure, two, a clear solution pathway, and three, it establishes the most important partnerships right from the beginning. It's always easier when you're looking forward and for change to say, let's from the beginning share analysis, share our thinking and create buy-in between the people where we want to go. We use a very uh, simple model and here I want to switch over now to the practical side because I really commend all the businesses that have signed up and are going to speak on the panel thereafter they have shown great leadership on this very important trajectory around the circular economy. And uh, often we work with many of these businesses all over the globe and they're using kind of seven pillars on how to change a system, but make it very practical so that you can take it away. And at the end, I will share with you my Instagram and my LinkedIn name. Please check it out there and download this very simple templates you can get to work with just tomorrow. So on the one hand, we're looking into preserving what is already there, keeping in use the resources we already have. To be able to do this and uh, to use the energy that is there and is renewable, we really need to prioritize regenerative resources. And the third component that is very important on the resource side, which you will see on the left side of this slide, is to use not waste, but to use a resource as a new resource. So we should think about designing and forgetting about the word waste. When I look at my own 
kitchen bin, a lot of the waste just becomes a beautiful new product or beautiful new fertilizer when you look into the bio waste that we have at home. And uh, obviously reducing plastic is a very important part of your own journey at home. Very central to this, uh, this thinking about circular economies that it is a debate that is very much rooted in, the, in, in economy. In the economy is how we're going to run our households, how we want to run our businesses in a much more holistic and sustainable way. And for this, we need to rethink on how we approached it. We need to rethink on how we engage others and how we can make things more collaborative and more transparent and therefore rethink the business model. This needs collaboration. Radical collaboration is the way to go. Um, it demands a lot from all of us because it's a new way of thinking. It sometimes necessitates that you don't only think of yourself and your own, um, um, that your own benefit into something, but then you talk about your partners and say, how can we create one from one plus one, uh, maybe five? Because that's how prosperity for many can look like in the future when we're going about and over the, uh, the mere focus on financial and GDP gain, but really think about what does gain and profitability and prosperity mean from a social, from a human, and from a uh, from a from a world and uh, from a planetary lens. We certainly need to design things in a different way. That's on the right side of the of the slide, top right side. Decide things, design things for the future. I'm gonna come with an example very quickly. And all of this we have to respect uh, and should use what technology is bringing us. I want to run you through a couple of examples for each of these pillars that makes it even more tangible. And please bear with me. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please also submit them. When we think about designing for the future, it means that uh, the designers are sent back together with everybody in the team in an organization and said, how can you design something that is not being thrown away? How can it be, for example, modular, that you can repair it better? How can it uh, contain and be existent of several and less composites than in the past. That's an example from a headphone producer, Sherrard Street, uh, that is based here in Holland, that is giving such a model on how to redesign headphones. And I think they will have a lot of success right now because headphones is definitely what we all need. I have here also a fancy microphone I procured because we uh, have to make sure we can understand each other very well in this journey. The prioritization of regenerative resources is about using what is regenerative. A quick example that is also always very tangible because many of us like it is beer. Uh, a couple of companies have started to use rainwater for its production of beer, therefore also reducing the strain on the resources and water will be one of the very, very key resources in the future that we have to, be, that we have to keep clean and we have to keep healthy if we're looking at uh, living with 8 billion plus people on this planet. Waste as a resource is an interesting example uh, because many of my friends have these very fancy uh, bags from Fjellreven, from the Nordic countries, and they have uh, started to produce them out of recycled plastic. So uh, plastic obviously has been very much a focus of the circular economy approaches in the last years. It has been uh, getting a lot of traction, our focus on plastic. Turkey has beautiful beaches and we all know and don't want the plastic to be washed on the shore there. Therefore, better change the system. Uh, so that's the circular economy approach and keep things in the loop and in use. Recycling is important part of it. So when we have plastic to recycle, use it for new fantastic products and give these resources a real upgrade. Number four, I like this example very much uh, because circular economy um, has been working with Philips a long time. Uh, and Philips is a fantastic front runner. I think it's a very good example also on leadership taken on circularity. The CEO of uh, Philips has made years ago now a promise that he wants to take the whole company uh, in the next 20 years circular. And this, believe me, I've spoken to many people there, puts a lot of challenges for the teams. And it's a unifying aspect for the company because it gives a very, very clear, uh, unique selling proposition for the cu customers and clients. Be with us part of the journey and the team internally is challenged to truly rethink what and how business has been done in the last years. So that is a very important thing to keep in mind. Product life extension. Here, the example is of an MRI scanner uh, that is being used in for hospitals, obviously. They were sold in the past, 
But now with a new business model, so this is also an example for new business models, uh, people are able to, or the company has been able to uh, build a reverse logistic supply chain, bringing back the old scanners to a refurbishment uh, factory and there upgrading the product with the newest technology, using the resources for the new product and making sure this cycle is completely used. So we're looking at a redefinition also of the product, of the producer uh, responsibility in the debate, which is very important. This is a, a, a debate that is driven from the responsibilities from the businesses. But please, all of us also take our responsibility as consumers and human beings to make sure that the businesses can make the shift. Innovation will always go there, also where market demand is. Rethinking the business model is a very interesting one. Um, because this, uh, the uh, Bundles is a, is a startup company and now a scale-up company that is charging and that is renting out, uh, for example, um, washing machines. And they are charging per turn of the machine. So depending on how often you use it, you will be charged. Therefore, a much more closer link between the usage and uh, how much you pay. And I think the company with an excellent service system is also making sure that such a system can function on a bigger scale. <coughs> Forgive me. An example that is, uh, 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 is lovely when you talk about collaboration, it is what I said before in the pillar of creating joint value out of new collaborative efforts. And an example, because it is so clear for our minds is that Heinz Ketchup teamed up with Ford Motors, so an automotive company, with a food company where they said we can use from the production the peel of a tomato to uh, produce and make the dashboards of cars from. I think a very good example on how a unique and uh, before maybe uh, this company saw each other as unlikely allies, but through a smart innovation process, this idea came about and was able to materialize. And a big passion of mine, digital, uh, the digital economy, the digital technology, and how it can drive systems change. Um, here in Holland, for example, uh, the, the waste bins outside in the cities have smart uh, devices in them, where it clearly says if the device of the, the waste bin is full or if it's half full, and if it has to be picked up. Because think about the waste has to be picked up by trucks. So therefore, if you make sure that you only pick up the devices and the bins that are full, you can economize on your uh, route and therefore also be much more lenient uh, in your use of fossil fuels. And we have been working also with a company uh, like DHL on reverse logistic systems uh, because the problem often when you bring back old assets, for example, mobile phones, back to a refurbishing uh, or recycling uh, factory, we always have to think, does it actually make sense? So taking a product that is maybe here in uh, Europe being used to take it to a refurbishing uh, location in China, maybe doesn't make sense because so much CO2 and so much fossil fuel is being emitted and used. And so we need to think ourselves the question, what does the, uh, the digital technology provide as impact points? Is it useful? Yes or no? And then with such impact metrics, uh, really new and uh, groundbreaking systems can be designed. These are some examples, I think, from sure looking at the pillars of a circular economy, how they can drive change. Uh, you will hear many more and many different ones um, than now in the presentation from the different businesses. I think it's a fantastic opportunity to bring that all together in a, in a simplified framework because it's all about the first step. It's about the first step. If you're a front runner, it's the next step, running faster and inspiring more for change. When you're a person that is more an early adapter, just look forward on what is already being done. And if it's very new, because many people come to me from banks or from big utilities, let's say, how can we make a change in our own company? I think the time is now coming back to this motto that I have said at the beginning. The crisis shows us that we can change. If we're able to change the 20% that lead to a systems change, that's perfect. Let's all tomorrow get up and for example, use circular economy thinking. Uh, this is my wish for you, for us, so we can make a real change happen in this pause. Please link on Instagram or uh, via email, also on Twitter, on LinkedIn, so we can keep this dialogue going. And I'm happy to invite all of you for the next version of our webinar series 
we will be inviting you also through your partners at SKD. Uh, but we're going to have also a discussion about global supply chains, because I know also Turkey is very much an important country in this global supply chains on textile or the food. And uh, we all need to reconsider now how we're going to draw the plan for the future. And please be all part of this. Thank you. Harold, uh, very happy to hear you. It was such a good coincidence that you uh, mentioned Philips and bundles. Philips actually is on the, li on the line right now. They'll be presenting, Selin Hanım uh, from Philips will be presenting their business model shortly. And bundles is also spotlighted in our um, knowledge app. It's a, it's a very good showcase of circular economy. And there's actually two questions for you. Uh, can you see it in the chat box? Can I yes. do, can I read it or yes, it's in I can, English? I can I can <laughs> pick it up. It's in English from Zena. Yes, very English. Based on so, your observation, what are the things that climate crisis can learn from current crisis from systems perspective? Are you? Oh, that's a long question. Are you expecting a major shift in consumer mindset? Um, let's take this one by one. Uh, what are the things that the climate crisis can learn from the cur current crisis? I think I have uh, highlighted some of these aspects at the beginning. The solutions are out there, we know it. And if we can truly come all together now, that's possible. I really think that the uh, joint and collaborative effort will have to show this. And we see suddenly now that amazing things are happening. If a country wants to rescue an airline or a certain industry, a lot of financial um, um, resources can also be mobilized. I hope that more of these resources can be mobilized for the right causes that can put our economies on the right track for the future. Uh, we discussed this morning, very interesting, about the consumer mindset because uh, we have just heard again the figures out of the US, America, 26 million people um, are filed for unemployment. This is record highs. So we also need to see now that the businesses that are really running into uh, challenging times as well as the people, the employers and the people who are working. So uh, hopefully we can not lose track of this goal that climate uh, of the, uh, the crisis that the climate crisis is, uh, is showing um, because it's a much bigger crisis as we all know from all reports. It's the much more longer lasting and the much more threatening in terms also of people's lives. So I hope that the companies that are presenting after uh, show you that it's interesting to procure such pro, um, products and you as, and us as consumers have to continue asking ourselves where do we put our money and where do we put our financial assets. Also from a business perspective the, con the question goes on, would you expect businesses to adapt their models to more sustainable practices in short medium term? I absolutely hope so and I know sometimes a transition period is needed uh, but certainly the thinking should start today. Um, and prioritize the right, prioritize where you want to go. I think that's an important one. We're working a lot with cities or so circular economy is working with a lot of cities. And the first question is always, where do you want to go as a city? I mentioned the example of Philips. Where do you want to go as a company? You want to be fully circular? This has many implications. So absolutely. Now the long-term thinking should be prioritized. And I'm having been in business myself, no, unfortunately, this is very difficult. So I think the right policy measures have to support this. There's a huge, huge role for governments to play in this. And I hope government is also looking today. So we should make it an issue. Uh, the second question was, is a company, if a company is struggling to survive during the crisis, why should they consider circular economy as a solution? I think it's, uh, there's always the, the, the short term aspects that we have to consider. And I'm uh, only too well aware of the dangers and difficulties because I speak to businesses uh, uh, every single day um, and they say very clearly we have to save uh, employment now we have to save now uh, ourselves at the same time a way to look into making your business future proof for the future uh, with uh, the right income with the right engagement with your stakeholders with the right engagement with your employees therefore circular economy gives very very good uh, anchor points and ways to think about that so we always have to think in a crisis and how we manage the crisis now, but also on how we actually see the long-term business model. And many business models we are seeing will not be possible anymore in the future. So it's always a good crisis. I think it's a good time to start to rethink. And that's not always easy. I have the biggest respect for that. 
uh, uh, then the person uh, suggests to work on food waste. That is fantastic. I think Munever, uh, the more companies we can have in the in the example libraries, also mm -hmm. circular economy, please check out the website. And uh, uh, I will leave you also a website here in the chat where you can submit uh, your uh, case study to the biggest uh, circular economy libraries in the world because it's all about sh um, sharing knowledge. Um, it's important that we are connected there. So there you are, fantastic work, great that Vermicompost is doing this kind of work. Um, Zeynep, thank you that you, uh, that you uh, gave me the feedback that I covered most of your questions. These are big questions. I can only give you a glimpse in my thinking, but I want to say thank you very much for giving the time that we had to share this, uh, this discussion. Happy to take any questions I shared with you and I'm sure so many uh, we are able to share also contact details. Please just get going and let's help each other in this uh, leadership journey. We all have our share to do. We can only inspire to, uh, each other and circular economy was always for me a way of thinking about the world not shaming anybody because we know we sometimes have to speak truth to power and speak truth to certain industries, but it's working with the industries to help them to change and inspire governments to share and change their policy making and make sure this is happening now. Yes. Thank you. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. I know, I know you're very busy. Uh, so there's one last question. Are, are we going to be able to share the slides? Absolutely. And, uh, okay. you know, uh, to all of you, I've spent many summers in my youth in Turkey. I love Turkey very much. And uh, the people working there, I wish really the country all the best. I hope to come back very yes, soon, hopefully. maybe by bike or by train. <laughs> but there we have to call on all the EU decision makers and also the individual countries. Please build the high speed trains much quicker. We truly yes. need them. And I hope to see all of you soon and certainly will uh, share the slides.